This is the Volkswagen T-Roc we've been waiting for. It's the new affordable entry-level 110 TSI style. It's about $7,000 cheaper than the 140 TSI Sport. But unlike that model, this one has a less powerful engine, it isn't all-wheel drive, and it's got a slightly slimmer standard equipment list. But is this the pick of the T-Roc range? In this review, I'll cover off all the important stuff that you probably want to know about the Volkswagen T-Roc 110 TSI style. But if you're curious about something in particular, or if you're just impatient, you can always scrub ahead. The time codes are on your screen now. Or if you're watching on YouTube, you'll find the chapter markers in the timeline below, so you can make your own way through this review. Also, if you are on YouTube, don't forget, you'll find the link to our full detailed written review in the description below. It may be a base model car, but Australia's taste for the finer things in life means that we get a pretty attractive looking entry-level version of the T-Roc. It does have style in its name after all. Tell us what you think in the comments section below. Do you like the look or would you choose something else? Let us know. At the front you'll find LED headlights with adaptive beams and auto high beam, plus there are chrome accents on the grille and I really like the LED daytime running lights as well. In profile, you'll notice the style model still gets big 18-inch alloy wheels, and all models come with the two-tone gloss black roof finish and black door mirrors at no extra cost. Again, the chrome finish here is pretty prevalent, including that hockey stick, as Volkswagen calls it, across the tops of the windows. And this spec is actually a little shorter nose to tail than the 140 because it doesn't have the sporty body kit. Have you hit subscribe on our YouTube channel yet? We'd love to have you along for the ride. And also make sure you hit the bell icon so you can keep up to date with all of our latest videos. We'll take a closer look inside the cabin of the T-Roc soon. You can jump ahead to that if you want. But first, we're gonna take a closer look at the pricing and specs of the 110 TSI style. If you haven't watched Tom White's review of the 140 TSI Sport version of the T-Roc, then you really should. If you're watching on YouTube, the link will be dropping down at the top of your screen now, and it'll give you the context you need to see what you get versus what you don't get in that version versus this, the entry-level car. So, what are you paying and what are you getting? With a price tag of $33,990 plus on-road costs, the T-Roc starts a little dearer than some rival small SUVs. It costs more than the base model versions of the Mazda CX-30, Toyota CHR, and even its sibling, the Skoda Karoq. But the T-Roc style comes pretty well loaded with equipment, including the aforementioned LED headlights and daytime running lights, 18-inch wheels, black contrast roof, keyless entry and push-button start, semi-autonomous parking, dual zone climate control, an 8-inch screen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, reversing camera, and a bunch of other safety stuff besides. We'll get to that in the safety section. There are a few option packs you can choose if you want to personalize your T-Roc, and you can read all about them at the Cars Guide site in our detailed review. But as this car sits, it's the base model car, no options at all. Does it live up to its price tag on the inside? Let's find out. Inside the cabin of the entry-level T-Roc, it's a pretty nice place to be, although it does have some entry-level elements, like this hard plastic on top of the dashboard. It's also on top of the doors and on the transmission tunnel as well. But there's soft padded sections for your elbows on this center console bin and also on the door card as well. And in terms of storage, there's some under here and you'll also find a pair of cup holders, a nice storage section in front of the gear selector, plus big bottle holders with door cards as well. There's an eight inch touchscreen media system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, but you'll need to invest in a USB-C cable because the old cables just don't work anymore. Or you can get a little adapter. There's also dual zone climate control, a nice auto dimming rear vision mirror, plus an electric park brake, push button start and keyless entry, which unlocks the door when you walk up to it. It doesn't even need you to press a button. Generally, it's a pretty nice place to be. The seats are pretty comfortable. There's a digital speedometer for the driver, no head up display, but really it's a pretty nice place to be and pretty comfortable too. What about the back seat? Is it comfy? 
Keep in mind, this isn't a large SUV or even a mid-size SUV, so the space back here shouldn't be too surprising. I'm 182 centimeters or six foot. This seat is set for my driving position, and my knees are pretty much hard up against the seat, but I've got lots of foot room, plenty of headroom, and decent amount of shoulder space as well. Although, maybe fitting three across might be a squeeze because the seats are pretty well sculpted for just two in the outboard zones. And there are isofix points, two of them here, two of them on this side, and three top tether points as well. And in terms of comfort and convenience, you've got a fold-down armrest with cup holders, and that turns into a ski port as well, which is ultra handy. There's a pair of mat pockets. You get door pockets that are big enough for bottles. Plus, there are rear seat air vents, which is a rarity in the small SUV space, and two USB-C charge ports back here too. So it's pretty well catered for. Now, what about the boot? Interestingly, the 110 TSI style actually has a bigger boot than the 140 top spec car. That's because this one is front wheel drive, not all wheel drive, but you still get a space saver spare underneath the boot floor, and there's an extra 53 litres in the 110 versus the 140, and you get a little bit of extra space with all the seats laid down flat as well. Next up, let's take a look at the safety specs. Even for a base model car, this 110 TSI style version of the T-Roc has some pretty advanced safety technology. Here's a rundown. As standard, there is auto emergency braking with pedestrian detection, lane keeping assistance, adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, auto high beam lights, and driver fatigue monitoring. Inside, there are six airbags and the media screen doubles as your reverse camera monitor. Plus, there are front and rear parking sensors and there's a system that allows the car to even park itself. Next up, engine specs. The engine in the 110 TSI style is a 1.4 litre turbo petrol and as you can probably tell from the name it's got 110 kilowatts of power and 250 newton metres of torque which is a lot for a small SUV. Unlike a lot of other Volkswagen models that have come before it, the T-Roc 110 TSI has a regular automatic transmission, not a dual clutch auto which we've come to expect. We'll cover off how the powertrain behaves in the driving section. You can jump ahead to that if you want. But next, we're going to take a look at the fuel consumption figures. The 110 TSI version of the T-Roc has a pretty small engine, but it's also a pretty small SUV. And the official combined cycle fuel consumption figure is also quite compact. You'll see it on your screen now. And here's what I've seen at the fuel pump. This is my real world fuel use figure. You'll see it on your screen now. But just remember, the T-Roc requires 95 Ron premium unleaded petrol, no matter which grade you buy. Next up, ownership. VW Australia offers a pretty decent ownership program, though it doesn't better any of its competitors. The warranty is five years and unlimited kilometres, and you get one year of roadside assist for free. There are a couple of options for servicing. You can pay as you go via the brand's cap price servicing plan, or opt for a care plan for either three or five years. Prices are on your screen now. Next, let's see how it drives. As soon as you jump in the driver's seat and set off, you notice one thing that's different about this version of the Volkswagen T-Roc. That is that it doesn't have a dual clutch automatic transmission. Instead, it's a regular eight speed auto. And that means that it takes off from a standstill just a little bit better and a little bit more easily than any dual clutch Volkswagen that I've driven. And that means that progress is just well, something you don't even need to think about. So you don't have to plan your takeoff from a standstill, from a roundabout, or from a traffic light. It just goes. And that makes urban driving like this just so much easier. As I mentioned, there's 250 Newton meters of torque in this car, which is quite a lot considering that it isn't a very heavy small SUV. And when you put your foot down, it does pull away with surprising zest. I wouldn't say that it's sporty in its response, but I wouldn't say that it's slow either. The auto is a smooth shifting unit and mostly pretty thoughtful as well. 
You don't need to think too much about it. You don't have paddle shifters to take matters into your own hands, but there is a manual mode down on the selector if you do think that you want to choose which gear you're in. I don't think you'll need to because mostly it's really well sorted. And because it's a Volkswagen, the drive experience is very nice. The steering's light and accurate and has a decent amount of feel through the wheel as well. Some other SUVs in this segment really miss the point when it comes to the intended purpose of the steering. It should be light, it should be accurate, and it should be easy to use. You should be able to go through roundabouts without thinking about it. And it shouldn't be too heavy as well. And in the t rox case, it isn't. It's really well sorted. And that's even considering that this is front wheel drive. So it has to do both the power and the direction through the front wheels. And that can be a challenge at times. In the wet, you can expect a little bit of wheel spin to contend with, but if you're measured with your throttle application, you should be fine. On my drive loop today in the suburban area that I've been driving, I've noticed that the ride can be a little bit sharp over, well, sharp edges. And that's to do with the fact that it's got 18 inch wheels as standard. They are pretty low profile tires, but I haven't really driven any product with 18 inch wheels and tires that rides any better than this. So it's not to the point of annoyance, but it's just something you might want to consider but I haven't just been spending my time in suburbia. I've also been across a mix of different drives with country roads and also highways, and it is really just a competent little SUV to drive. It's a pretty quiet small SUV as well. Some small SUVs do have a little bit less sound insulation to isolate those in the cabin from what's happening around them. You can still hear a bit of tire roar over coarse chip surfaces, but to me, it's not bad at all. Overall, the drive experience in the VW t rock 110 TSI style is a very good one. I've driven pretty much all the small SUVs on the market, and this is up there with the best, if not the best. This version of the Volkswagen T-Roc is going to be a better bet for a lot of buyers out there. If you don't need all-wheel drive and you can do without the extra power and torque of the more expensive model, then this version comes across as not only the better option in the T-Roc range, but also one of the most impressive compact SUVs out there. Tell us what you think in the comments section below. Would you buy one of these or would you choose something completely different? We'd love to know. And if you are watching on YouTube, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon to stay up to date with all of our videos and you're probably wondering what score the T-Roc 110 TSI style is getting. Well, here it is.